required for the introduction. Uh, alaikum. Good morning, everyone. I'd like to firstly thank the organizing committee for choosing me to speak about this topic. So, um, in sarcoma and rare tumors, I'd like to briefly talk about the backbone of treatment of metastatic soft tissue sarcoma. Then I will briefly speak about the important phase 3 negative trials um, that have been published in, within this year. Then we'll move on to positive trials in GIST, in MTRAC uh, positive tumors, in alveolar soft part sarcoma, in desmoid tumors, and in giant cell tumor. Then I will conclude. Um, so this slide basically summarizes what we have known probably for the last 20 plus years, which is doxorubicin is, has probably not been beaten for a long time as first line in soft tissue sarcoma. So there is the EURTC trial, which com combined it with iphosphamide, Picasso trial, which combined it with paliphosphamide, and the SARC-21 trial, which combined it with evophosphamide, comparing the combination versus doxorubicin alone, and all three of them were not significant in terms of uh, a significant improvement of overall survival. There's also the important GEDIS trial, which has shown us that doxorubicin is almost equivalent to gemcitabine and docetaxel. So let's start with some disappointing results. So Lartuvo, or Olaratumab, was an exciting molecule um, that is basically a monoclonal antibody that is uh, that inhibits PDGFR uh, alpha signaling. So the phase two trial, I'm sure um, a lot of you remember this. This was a very exciting phase two trial. So the primary endpoint of this was PFS. So um, the comparator arms were doxorubicin combined with Lartuvo for six to eight cycles, followed by maintenance Lartuvo as compared to doxorubicin single agent. And this was powered to detect a PFS uh, change. So if we look at the um, Kaplan-Meier curve on the left side, which is the PFS one, um, not a significant change. Hazard ratio was modest, 0.67, uh, negative p-value. However, if we actually look on, on the right-hand side, this was the overall survival curve. And again, this study was not powered to detect the overall survival. Um, impressive results, doubling of the overall survival of doxorubicin with a single agent. So 14 months and um, 28 months. So this led to the phase three clinical trial, the ANNOUNCE uh, phase three clinical trial, which was a randomized double blind placebo controlled, which um, compared the same thing, doxorubicin uh, with Lartuvo, uh, as opposed to doxorubicin single agent. And this study was powered to detect overall survival in the total of um, soft tissue sarcomas and uh, a subgroup of sarcoma. The reason they chose this subgroup is there was a signal in the phase two clinical trial. So if we look at the um, PFS results, not significant uh, and not major changes in the combined total soft tissue sarcoma group and in the sarcoma population. And if we look at the overall survival, um, I mean, these curves um, are almost on top of each other, so uh, hugely disappointing, unfortunately. And this is in the total soft tissue sarcoma population and in the lyomyo sarcoma population. So, what happened with Lartuvo? So there was promising phase two data. It was, however, a small, and it was an unblinded trial, and the, um, with the intent of signal finding. PFS was the primary endpoint, which was not impressive in the phase two trial. However, there was a large overall survival benefit, and there was a huge discrepancy between PFS and overall survival. How can we explain this? Um, again, phase two compared to phase three, and of course, there is heterogeneity um, between and within the subtypes of lyomyosarcomas, um, so uterine versus non-uterine, low grade versus high grade. So this was a um, disappointing uh, phase three negative trial. So let me talk about um, 
endocolin in angiosarcoma. So endocolin is an endothelial cell target. It is expressed on endothelial cells and it is essential for angiogenesis. It is selectively expressed on proliferating vessels in cancer. And once you inhibit VEGF, it is upregulated. Um, interestingly, attenuated endocolin expression causes Osler Weber Rendo syndrome which is associated with improved survival uh, or improved cancer survival specifically. Um, persistent expression of endogolin on tumor cells um, results in progression despite the VEGF inhibition, while when you inhibit endogolin, you resensitize tumors to VEGF inhibition. Um, so again, when you target VEGF and endoglin together, you improve the anti-tumor effect of VEGF, and endoglin is expressed directly on angiosarcoma tumor cells. So if we look here, this is a normal human liver, endoglin um, is expressed in hum human liver cancers here, and it is significantly expressed in angiosarcoma um, tumors. So phase 1b-2 trial was showed impressive responses. So this is the uh, endocrine inhibitor, uh, TRC-105. Um, and it was combined with pezopinib, a um, multi-target TKI, and an anti-VEGF. So these three patients have all had significant improvements. The first one had CR, which happened quite early at day 48 and it persisted to 30 plus months. Patient two with a facial angiosarcoma had maintenance of CR for more than 28 months, and, they, and, and the patient had an early response, and patient three remained on treatment for 16 plus months. So impressive. So PFS um, in patients without prior VEGF inhibition was 7.8 months. Number of patients was small, however, this was a phase 1b-2 uh, trial. Um, PFS was 5.6 months in, in all the angiosarcoma patients, and the combination uh, of TRC plus pezopinib was somewhat safe. And treatment duration of TRC-105 plus pezopinib exceeded the treatment uh, duration uh, as compared to the prior therapy. So this led to a phase three trial, which is the TAPAS trial, which is the largest uh, randomized trial that had angiosarcoma patients. And the, um, this patient basically randomized TRC-105 plus bezopinib compared to bezopinib alone. And um, the primary endpoint was progression-free survival. <coughs> So um, Tracon, which is the pharmaceutical company that owned this um, molecule, released this in April of 2019, which um, basically said that this combination did not demonstrate clinically meaning efficacy in patients with advanced or metastatic angiosarcoma. So um, another disappointing phase three uh, trial in soft tissue sarcoma. Um, now this molecule TRC-105 is currently being investigated uh, in wet age uh, related macular degeneration. So on a positive note, let's move on to positive trials. So I'll start with GIST. So um, Invictus uh, trial, which looked at Repratinib, which is a broad kit and PDGFR alpha inhibitor, examined this in the fourth line setting and the results are as follows. So PFS, and this is fourth line, so at progression um, or post-progression to Gleevec, Sutent, and Regorafenib. And the PFS was significant at 6.3 months compared to placebo at one month, and the result is significant. And the company is expected to launch a, um, an NDA on the first quarter of 2020. So watch this space. Um, so, reperatinib is currently being studied in the second line setting compared to Sutent, and in the previous trial, which is the Invictus trial, which showed the significant PFS, also showed a significant overall survival, and again, this is fourth line, of 15.1 months compared to 6.6 .6 months. Another exciting molecule, avapretinib, 
Now, what's unique about abapritinib is it is significant. Um, it is a specific inhibitor of PDGFR alpha exon 18 uh, mutation. So, two trials. One is Voyager phase three trial, which is um, undergoing, is examining this uh, this agent uh, compared to regoratinib and it's currently being examined against Sutent in the second line setting. So um, Heinrich and his colleagues presented this in the uh, sarcoma meeting at CTOS, and this is looking specifically at the exon 18 mutated PG PDGFR alpha gists, an impressive waterfall plot. However, these are the significant, or these are the specifically mutated uh, gists. Um, with 98% of those patients um, achieving tumor reduction. Another exciting uh, molecule in GIST is cabozantinib. Um, now this is being examined um, at third line and beyond, and this was a phase two trial with the, um, with the objective of achieving progression-free uh, rate at 12 weeks. And these are the first 41 patients evaluated, and they have reached the end point of significance, which is 24 patients out of the 41 achieving progression-free at 12 weeks. This is the total population of the phase two trial, and 60% of them have achieved uh, or have been prog progression-free at 12 weeks. So this is also exciting. Now, moving on to NTRAC inhibitors. Um, so, uh, TRAC uh, or transmembrane proteins, um, there are three receptors, A, B, and C, which are encoded by NTRAC genes 1, 2, and 3. They are expressed normally in neuro neuronal tissues and they are essential in the uh, development of the nervous system. Um, now, the oncogenic mutation is actually diffusion and it induces cell proliferation and it engages downstream signaling uh, pathways. Now, this mutation is quite rare. Um, multiple small trials have shown it to be um, probably highest at certain sarcoma patients. Now, I won't spend uh, time talking about this. Now, let's look at this. So this was presented in CTOS 2018, and this looked at uh, all the um, track fusion sarcomas. Now this was a combination of pediatric and adult patients. This was uh, 48 patients. And if we look here, um, significant responses. So 70% had partial response, 20% had complete response. So a beautiful looking waterfall plot. Now, um, what I wanted to show here is, um, so duration of treatment. Uh, now this is a combination of pediatric and adult sarcomas. Now, the median time to response was quite significant and quite quick at 1.8 months. So this is quite significant. Now, this is an example um, of a patient with NTRAC1 fusion. Um, so this is at study baseline, so an ugly looking CT of the chest with multiple uh, metastases. At two cycles only, um, significant reduction. And at cycle five, also another significant reduction. Moving on to alveolar soft part sarcoma. Now we know that these types, or this type of uh, soft tissue sarcoma is sensitive to immunotherapy. So let's look at the updates. So a phase two trial has combined axitinib with pembrolizumab um, in patients with advanced soft tissue sarcomas, including soft uh, alveolar soft part sarcoma. Now this was a single arm phase two trial. Now, if we look at this waterfall plot, so a small number of patients, however, these are the uh, alveolar soft part uh, sarcoma patients, so impressive response in this subgroup. Also, in terms of duration of treatment, um, impressive responses or to stay on the drug uh, in the ASPS uh, group. So, um, there were 32 patients evaluable for response. Now, this, uh, this trial included soft tissue with a subgroup of ASPS. Partial responses were 8 out of the 32 patients, 
six of those eight were the ASPS uh, patients. One were, had epithelioid sarcoma and another one had soft tissue lyomyosarcoma. sarcoma. 28% of those patients had stable disease and the clinical benefit rate was 53%. Now, another specific ASPS uh, trial was uh, a trial that investigated sidirinib. Sidirinib is a multi-target uh, TKI with uh, specific anti-VEGF activity. This was a double-blind placebo-controlled randomized phase two trial published in uh, 2019. And if we look here, now this, is, this compared sidirinib versus placebo, uh, phase two, uh, in the second line setting. So nice waterfall plot um, of sidirinib compared to placebo. And this is the uh, progression-free survival curve. So if we, if we look at the results, so the median progression-free survival was 10.1 months in the sidirinib group as compared to almost five months in the placebo group with a modest hazard ratio of 0.82. Moving on to giant cell tumor. So what's new here? So pixidotinib is a multi-target uh, TKI that has been studied in uh, tenosynovial giant cell tumors. Um, now this is second line and beyond, and it significantly improved the objective response rate over placebo. So 40% versus uh, zero, of course. It, it was safe and well tolerated, and it did improve um, patient symptoms and function. Um, now again, comparator is placebo, um, nice looking uh, waterfall plot with um, an overall response rate of uh, 40%. So nine patients or 15% had complete responses and a quarter of the patients had partial responses. So what's new in desmoid tumors? So Desmopaz trial was a uh, two to one randomization trial comparing um, vinblastine and methotrexate compared to high dose pezopinib. And this was a uh, randomized phase two clinical trial. So when we look at the waterfall plot, um, so almost similar, however, when we look at the partial responders, um, almost 40% in the pisopinib arm as compared to 25% uh, in the combined methotrexate and vinblastine arm. So other positive trials and approaches in rare tumors and soft tissue sarcoma. So sorafenib uh, is being studied in a phase two trial, phase three trial of desmoid tumors. There is evidence of activity in, uh, of crizotinib in um, IMT, ALK mutated IMTs, and this is examined in a phase two trial. Um, Tazimetostat is an uh, EZH2 inhibitor and is being investigated in a phase two trial in epithelioid sarcoma patients. There's also evidence of IDH inhibitors in chondrosarcoma. I have shown you some immunotherapy uh, combination trials in ASPS. However, there is new evidence that it also is active in angiosarcoma patients. There's also new evidence that shows that um, CDK4-6 inhibitors work in D-differentiated liposarcomas, and I think we know that there is activity of MDM2 inhibitors in D-diff liposarcoma patients. So, um, in conclusion, I think anthracyclines still remain uh, appropriate first-line therapies. Uh, I do not think that we will see uh, all-comer first-line soft tissue sarcoma uh, phase three clinical trials. Uh, Subtype specific trials are ongoing. However, I do not think that this is the complete answer. We need to incorporate uh, more biomarkers, and I think we are achieving a better understanding of biology. One of the problems with sarcoma is numbers are scarce. So it is quite tough to actually accrue patients in large uh, phase three clinical trials. And by this, I end my presentation.